We react to the Jim Leonard press conference and talk about some of the pros and cons of potentially going with Jim Leonard as the future coach of the Wisconsin Badgers. All that and more in today's Locked On Badgers. Let's go. You are Locked On Badgers, your daily podcast on the Wisconsin Badgers. Part of the Locked On Podcast Network, your team every day. Hey, what is going on, everybody? I'm Ryan Herrings, your host of Locked On Badgers, your team every single day. And today's show is brought to you by Bet Online. Bet Online has you covered the season with more props, odds, and lines than ever before. Bet Online, where the game starts. And let's get into it. So, Jim Leonard had his first press conference. I do want to thank, actually, before I do that, I do want to thank everybody who has been tuning into the show, wherever you're finding us. Really, really do appreciate y'all. Let's talk Jim Leonard's first, first real press conference. He was there when Chris McIntosh was talking about the decision to replace Paul Chris, but Jim Leonard had a press conference today, you know, game week. That's just part of the battle rhythm of college football. You know, all the coaches are having their press conferences. And uh, a couple things I want to take out of this and a couple things I want to react to. The first is uh, at, the, at the high level, he, to me, and let me know in the comments if you agree or disagree, he looked the part. I thought Jim Leonard looked the part. I thought he sounded the part. I didn't think he was Bredog- uh, Bre- Bregocious. Is that a word? I don't know if that's what I'm trying to use, but I didn't think he was trying to oversell anything. It's not his personality, but I thought he looked in control. I thought he was very calm about what he was trying to communicate. I thought he was clear in what he was communicating, and I thought he was pretty insightful. So I, I liked it. Listen, part of it is, for whatever we're, for whatever it's worth, we're not trying to, again, crush Paul Chris, but that's a low bar to follow. We could all agree with that. Paul Paul Christ at a press conference is about the bottom of the barrel. It's about as bad as it gets. And it's gotten worse over the years. Paul Christ has gotten more and more, um, more and more, you know, just almost drawn back, you know, more and more reluctant to give anything away, more and more just quite frankly, brutal to listen to. Um, and that that is really not played well with the program going poorly. So, you know, to hear Jim up there and for, to hear him be concise and clear and insightful and a little more open, it was really refreshing. I got I got to be honest as a Badgers fan, it was refreshing and it was nice to gain a little bit more insight into some areas that, quite frankly, I, I think fans in the media could use more insight into. You know, the media can be, and I, I remember Bill Walsh talking about this actually. Uh, the media can be your ally. I mean, I, I wasn't there for Bill Walsh, but I remember stories about Bill Walsh saying the media can be your ally or your enemy, you know, and it's okay to be a little more open and a little more insightful and and create, use your the media to create a little more energy around the program. So I that's my biggest takeaway to start with. I thought Leonard looked the part. He looked the part of a head coach. Uh, he sounded to me the part of a head coach. You know, a couple of the big things he talked about that I, I want to touch on. He said, um, I thought this was a really good, a really good quote and a really good thought from from Jim Leonard. He said, I'm gonna be true to myself no matter what. And this was part of a really interesting takeaway. If, if y'all heard this, you probably know where I'm going with this. You know, he he mentioned that I and I quote, I don't think we've hit the expectations and goals that I wanted when I came back to to coach. And now I'm in a position to impact that. To me, if, if you read between the lines there a little bit and you parse, and he was very complimentary of Paul Chris several times, you know, great relationship, a friend, a mentor. But that's a money quote right there. We haven't been as good as I wanted to be. It's partially why I came back to coach was to help Wisconsin get to a level, and now I can impact it more. I'm telling you, if you read between the lines, he sounds like somebody who's been frustrated with maybe some shackles on the program in certain areas. And it sounds like now he thinks he can maybe get some of that removed, or he can – push the program in a direction where, you know, maybe some of the stuff that Paul Chris was doing, you know, I, I can't imagine Jim Leonard loved watching that Wisconsin offense at a certain point because it, it wasn't helping the program win. And Jim Leonard came here to win. He said it himself in today's press conference. He said it before I came here to help this program get to spots. It hasn't been. And again, his money quote there is I can help impact that now. You know, he, he also at a point in the press conference mentioned how he and Paul Chris fundamentally agree on a lot of aspects of football there is some consistency there. And I, I could see, I could, I could do a mind meld with a lot of Badger fans are possibly, no, 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 we don't want you to be fundamentally aligned with Paul Chris. But I, I think that was more of a, from a culture standpoint comment from um, Jim Leonard, more of a, you know, we both believe in a lot of the same building blocks for a program, but I think Leonard's going to try to do it differently. You know, a couple of other things he talked about, you know, and this is something that we we've brought up on the show before, you know, the coaching staff, how was, 
how are we going to shift that around? Obviously, you've lost a head coach who also had input into the offensive game plan, who helped with quarterbacks, at least to some degree. Now you've taken the defensive coordinator, moved him to defense. How is this all going to play out? It sounds like they're still working through it. I think the logical progression is going to be uh, Bobby April is going to be the defensive coordinator. And then they have options, right? There's there's a couple of grad assistants. Mike Caputo is on the roster as a grad assistant. as a very interesting name as um, a player who could step in um, this season, not long-term maybe, but this season and help fill some of the, the coaching void from Jim Leonard at safety. And Jim Leonard is more of a head coach now. So I think there's there's options here. It sounds like they're still working through it. Obviously, we're, we're a day out. And one of the other quotes, one of the other things that Jim Leonard talked about was, you know, Sunday morning they were dissecting the game and they were kind of oblivious to, well, do you believe him or not? <clears throat> He said the assistant coaches were kind of oblivious to some of the higher level conversations being had about, you know, Paul, Chris and the direction of the program. So this is still very new. So it doesn't surprise me. And I don't think it's coach speak when they say we're still trying to work out, you know, the the coaches, who's going to do what, how can we shuffle around responsibilities? So I think that's still being worked out. A couple other things he talked about, you know, again, he said, I'm going to be true to myself no matter what. You know, he he did address, and again, this is where we're starting to get a little more clarity, a little more insight, a little more just honesty and accountability into the program. You know, he said we haven't played well enough. The account, the consistency. He talked about consistency a lot. He said we would call one play and get a good result in the same play and get a completely different result defensively. So, you know, he talked about the consistency. How do we get our players up to that consistent point? You know, he talked a lot about uh, working to to just keep the trust in the recruiting class, in the locker room, dealing with people with a lot of emotions. You know, a lot of people in the building have long relationships with Paul Chris. And he said, you know, those some of those people react in a certain way and some of them don't. And it's just about reading the room and helping everyone kind of manage through those reactions and then move forward. So I think he said all the right things. You know, he, he there was no coming in with with cannons and we're going to win every game and uh, Paul Chris did this and that and I'm here to change it. It was, I think he was subdued, but also forceful, uh, insightful, clear, concise. I think he did really well, uh, given the circumstances. I, I was pretty impressed, you know, and I, that really shouldn't surprise a lot of people. He's always been considered well-spoken, thoughtful, and intelligent. So I think he checked all those boxes. Uh, one other note, he did mention Alexander Smith is potentially practicing this week and potentially we get him back in this game. He's been a big loss on defense. Does it make a difference in Ohio State? No. Illinois, no, you know, but like he was supposed to be the best cornerback on the team. So getting him back in the fold will only help. And obviously really happy for Alexander Smith as well, who's, you know, put in a lot of work to get to this point in his career. You don't want to see anybody's senior season go down like that. So that's kind of the gist of the uh, the press conference um, coming up. I want to talk a little bit about uh, we're going to continue talking Jim Leonard, his potential fit. We're going to talk a little bit about some metrics some some tangible ways to evaluate Jim Leonard and the job he does this year in relation to should he get the job. So that's coming up next on Lockdown Badgers. But first, today's show is brought to you by our friends at Nissan. Our partners at Nissan have worked with us to create a new segment across the Lockdown College Network titled Thrilling Moments, where we highlight the most exciting play from the from the Badgers weekend game or their history. Um, and this week's thrilling moment, I you know, it came up right in my head. There's a bunch of them if you're a Badgers fan, but it's December 10th. 2010, October 16th, Ohio State's in the house. Number one, Ohio State, right? Camp Randall's rocking. And what happens? Kickoff, David Gilreath, 97 yards, houses it. I can still like see that play. I know where I was when that play happened. You know, I, I was getting text messages lighting up my phone. And Camp Randall went bananas. The Wisconsin sideline went bananas. You got the, the shot of all the Wisconsin offensive linemen pointing to their heads, you know, keep keep your composure, keep in it. And obviously that that sprung the 31-18 upset of number one Ohio State. The last time we beat beaten Ohio State, that was our thrilling moment. Uh, this segment has been inspired by the thrilling new designs featured across Nissan's new lineup of vehicles. Pursue what thrills you in the all-new Frontier Armada or Pathfinder today. Available now at Nissan, U, NissanUSA.com. Yeah, I love that. All right, let's let's keep going. Uh, again, want to appreciate and thank everybody that's that's tuned into the show. Really, really do appreciate y'all. And let's let's keep going. I, I want to talk some metrics, some tangible things that we can evaluate Jim Leonard on fairly, in my opinion, because there's things we can evaluate him on. We can't expect him to come in and suddenly the offensive line blocks better. I don't think we can expect him to come in and win five or six games in a row, although that would certainly be a mighty fine you know, feather in his cap. 
But there are some things I think that we can evaluate him on from now until the offseason. We have to make a decision when Chris McIntosh has to make that decision, right? So let's talk about him a little bit. The first one is game day decisions. I think this is an easy one. This is this is maybe the, the most obvious thing we can really look at outside of win-loss record. You know, Paul Christ, his game day decision-making has been bad. It's been bad for a couple of years, right? He he doesn't know seemingly when to go for it on fourth down. There, there's just no philosophy there. That's the thing that bothers me, right? If you're going to be a conservative coach and you believe in your defense and want to play field position, then be consistent for the most part in your decision making. Believe in who you are. Believe in your culture. Believe in believe in your philosophy. It seemed like the last couple of years, Paul Chris has just been flipping a coin on fourth down. Do I go for it? Do I not go for it? If I go for it, I don't get it. I'm going to regret it. And then the next day, next game, I'm not going to go for it when I should go for it. It has been just a real disaster, the decision-making, the two-point conversion that he didn't go for against Army, right? That incredibly weird, bizarre timeout debacle, fourth down, punt, go for it debacle against Minnesota last year. We can evaluate Jim Leonard on game day decisions, right? We, if, if he is unable to handle those moments when they come up, if he is waffling on you know, fourth down decisions, burning unnecessary timeouts, if he is making the same type of mistakes that Paul Christ was making, you know, if he's not managing the clock, if he's letting the time before half run out, like Paul Christ has done without trying to be a little more aggressive, if he's second guessing himself after things that are, are good decisions, if they go wrong, you shouldn't second guess yourself. You should continue making the good decisions because it's process based, not results based. So we can absolutely evaluate Jim Leonard on that. And we're going to, right? I think that's a big part of this. Um, the next one is penalties. Right. I, I think we can evaluate them on the discipline of the team and the discipline of the team is directly reflected in, you know, turnovers. It's directly reflected in penalties, silly penalties, late hits, false starts, you know, not having enough people on the field, uh, illegal formation, you know, lining up off sides. You know, it's just some simple things that this team has done a very poor job of. And discipline is tied into coaching. It's tied into the, the program's culture, the attention to detail. And it's tied into holding those players accountable. So I, I, I'm I, curious where those penalties go the rest of the year. Is that something, if it starts to drop off and it consistently drops off, I think that's something we can look at and say, you know, Jim Leonard potentially helped the, the discipline of the team because it hasn't been good. It hasn't been good. That's been one of the issues of the team is we haven't played clean and the attention to detail hasn't been there. And I think that starts at the top. I really do believe that is a coaching thing. It starts at the top and hasn't been good enough. Um, I want to talk about offense a little bit. So again, I, I mentioned, and let me know if you think I'm wrong. I don't think it's fair to, to expect Jim Leonard to come in and build a new offense, a new offensive culture, fix the offensive line. You know, no, that stuff's out of his wheelhouse and it should be. But what we could expect and what I would like to see is a tweak of the offensive game, game flow, right? Being a little more aggressive on early downs, throwing uh, excuse me, throwing out of more advantageous, ad, advantageous solutions for our advantageous spots for Graham Mertz, right? You don't need to throw on third and seven after you've run twice. Throw two or three times in a row. Like, it's okay. You know, the programs do that. You can throw on shotgun on first down because that's where Graham Mertz is more comfortable. And then you can run out of shotgun. I, I think those plays are in the playbook. And I think it's been more of a philosophy, more of a a coaching uh, decision not to play that way. I think we we have those plays in the playbook. I'm curious if the offense opens up a little bit, right? If some of those shackles are gone, if some of the conservativeness, and we don't know, by the way, how Bobby Ingram versus Paul Christ, where where that balance of power was offensively, we, we really don't know. But if we get a little more aggressive going forward, I think it's safe to say that Paul Christ still had a sizable influence into the offense. And I would like to see it change a little bit. Like, again... We're not going to drastically change our offensive system. We're not going to become um, a juggernaut. We're, our offense line is not going to suddenly get better because Jim Leonard's there. But could the game sequencing, could the the attacking philosophy change a little bit? I would like to see some of that out of this Wisconsin offense. And I think if we do, you can attribute some of that to uh, Bobby Ingram having a little more freedom, a little more power, and Jim Leonard enabling him a little bit more in those areas. So and that's another spot I think we can really look at. So we got penalties uh, or discipline, however you want to look at it. Um, we have obviously game day decisions, how he's managing the game are the moments too big for him. We got, does the offense open up a little bit? Uh, I want to talk the recruiting class a little uh, slightly, you know, I've never been a big fan of the coach needs to keep this current recruiting class together. 
let's evaluate him based on that because I think you make the right coaching hire and the recruiting will fall into place. But we also, I think you can also look at this class and if Jim Leonard is able to mostly keep them together, it's it's probably just another check in his box, right? You know, as, as a coach who can relate to recruits, as a coach who can convince recruits to stay the course, commit to the program, not the coaches. Recruiting is obviously an enormous deal. So if he is able to keep a class together and even add some add some people into this, you know, as we go forward, that's definitely something that you would have to, again, say, OK, that's another that's another thing I'm sold on. And I actually think he's going to be a good recruiter. I, I think Jim Leonard is going to be a good recruiter wherever he ends up. I think he already is. Um, and I think he's going to be able to sell his vision of a program, maybe even a little better than Paul Chris, but we're not sure on that one. Uh, the last thing, and this is kind of the most obvious we can judge him on is win loss record, right? We listen, we we've talked a couple different ways about this, right? You can look at the fact that Wisconsin's just not a very good team this year. And it's kind of tough to bring in a coach working with the staff he didn't put together and write a ship that has mostly been um, smashing into reefs and sinking. Okay. But we can also look at it. They're playing Northwestern this week, and Northwestern's terrible. And I know we have to go to Ryan Field, and they have that weird voodoo magic down there that we always run into, but that's a terrible program. Michigan State is a shell of what they were last year. Okay, They've been boat raced this year. Iowa's offense is maybe the only offense more boring than ours. Nebraska's already fired their coach. Maryland and Purdue are fine. Like They can throw the ball. They actually really can throw the ball around both of them. But again, it's Maryland and Purdue. We're not talking about juggernauts here. And in the last game of the year, revenge spot, we get uh, the Gophers in in Madison, and they're they're coming off a loss last week to Purdue. So my bigger point is none of these are juggernauts. This is a manageable schedule, even given the spot that Jim Leonard is taking over. So what, you know, those seven games, can you go four and three, right? That's an above 500 record. That means you're beating maybe Northwestern, Iowa, Nebraska, Purdue, or maybe you're beating Michigan State and losing to Iowa. I don't know. I think four and three would be a really good mark for him. And if he can hit on most of these metrics, I think this is your next head coach for the University of Wisconsin, right? If he can improve the discipline, if the moments aren't too big for him in game, if he can go four and three uh, and mostly keep the recruiting department, recruiting class together, it's not a complete fallout there. I, I think he's probably the next head coach. And I think those are fair metrics. I don't think it's fair to expect him to go five and two or six and one. I don't think it's fair to expect him to suddenly bring in four or five star recruits to finish off this class when we don't even know who the position coaches are going to be. Um, but I do think these metrics are fair. Coming up on Lockdown Badgers, um, that's kind of that. We're going to talk a little bit more, Jim Leonard. We're going to talk about some of the pros and cons big picture. What do I, why do I think he's a really good candidate? And what are some of the things that give me pause with Jim Leonard? That's coming up next on Lockdown Badgers. Uh, but first, today's show is brought to you by our friends at Bet Online. Bet Online. Bet online is your number one source for all your sports betting needs and information. It remains the, the best site for all your sports news, covering everything from golf, NASCAR, football, basketball, baseball, live in-game betting, futures betting. Um, you know, I released the bet online odds for the coaching big board for Wisconsin. Jim Leonard is the odds on favorite, followed by Bill O'Brien. And then uh, Lance Leopold, Dave Aranda's on there, a couple other interesting candidates. You know, so bet online has you covered with any type of odd, right? Whether it's coaching searches, um, you know, who's going to win the the NL, the National League, the American League? The pennant races are, are just about done. The NL East is just finishing up. Uh, basketball starting. There's a ton of futures. Uh, do it responsibly, but it's a lot of fun. Take a few dollars. Have some fun with it. Uh, go to Bet Online. Head to the website today. Bet Online, where the game starts. I want to thank everyone again for tuning in to Locked on Badgers, making this your first listen every day. Really, really appreciate all of you so much. Um, so, so much. If you can take a second, hit the subscribe button. It really helps the show. Again, we are in a race to catch Iowa, and we are literally almost there. I think we're 30 subscribers off of Iowa. So we're going to catch them because we're a better fan base than them. I fully, fully believe that. Uh, let's keep talking Jim Leonard. I, I want this all to be a Jim Leonard show because I think he is the odds-on favorite for good reason to be the next head coach at the University, University of Wisconsin. Uh, we're going to do some high-level pros and cons. Let me know in the comments what you think uh, about Jim Leonard. Pros and cons. Uh, you know we try to get all the comments up on the show. We try to respond to them. So you know this is a community-driven thing. So put it in there. We'll get it up on the show, and we'll talk about it. We'll talk it out. Um, let's start with pros. Highly respected, understands Wisconsin. Obviously, people can take that Wisconsin thing one way or the other, but and, and I don't think that should be the biggest thing. Like, I don't want to hire a Wisconsin guy just because he's a Wisconsin guy. But if he checks a lot of other boxes, being a Wisconsin guy to me is an advantage because you understand some of the inherent um, advantages and disadvantages of the state, of the program. 
Like you've lived it. You have relationships in house in in the state. You have more support within the administration. I think boosters are more willing to to put money in, which for the NIL time is is a huge deal. You know, I think all of that. If again, if you check the other boxes, it can't be just he's a Wisconsin guy, but he checked no other boxes. But I think he checks a lot of other boxes, and he's a Wisconsin guy. And to me, tangibly, what that means, because um, I don't want to just leave that out there and say, well, he's a Wisconsin guy. Well, what does that mean? What does that actually help you with? I think it helps you develop relationships in state, which is so important, right, for recruiting. I think it helps you understand some of the limitations within the administration department, athletic department. It's why Gary Anderson came here and kept banging his head against a brick wall because he couldn't figure out certain Wisconsin ways to do it. You're not going to have those learning curves with Jim Leonard. OK, so I do think being a Wisconsin guy helps. You know, I think if all else is, is equal, you have a couple of good candidates and you think two or three of them are, are very comparable. And one of them really understands the ins and outs of the state, of the high school coaches, of the university, of the administration. That's it's an advantage. It's absolutely an advantage. So to me, him being highly respected, being a Wisconsin guy, it helps. You know, he's he's also someone who should be relatable on a recruiting trail. He's played in the NFL, played in the NFL for, I think, nine years nine or 10 years, that's a big deal. He can sell that to recruits, right? He's also, uh, you know, um, a small town guy, former walk-on. He can sell a lot of that to a different type of recruit. So I think there's a lot there from a recruiting standpoint that Jim Letter makes a ton of sense on, you know, and he's, he's a guy that players and, and coaches and people within the, the department speak very highly of again. So all of that I think is important. And then the, maybe the most important, obviously, highly successful coordinator, right? You know, he's had the first, the fifth, the fourth, the third, and the first scoring defense in the Big Ten over his tenure. Um, to be fair, he's ninth this year, and we shouldn't just throw that out. He is replacing a lot of pieces. We did have to play that juggernaut Ohio State team, but the defense hasn't been good this year. But prior to that, there's a six-year track record, essentially, of his defense always being pretty good. And I think that matters. You know, So he's had success. People speak highly of him. He can sell his... NFL experience, he can sell recruiting in a certain way, and he understands Wisconsin. What are the cons? That's that's my high-level pros. Let me know in the comments if you agree, disagree with any of that. What are the cons? What are we worried about with Jim Leonard? Well, quite frankly, the first one is there's more proven candidates, right? I mean, let's be straight up. Not all coordinators make good coaches. And if you're familiar with a, a book, there's something called the Peter Principle, if you're familiar with that. Um, and the really short synopsis of the Peter principle is we all get promoted to our level of incompetence, right? So you know, great coordinators get promoted to be a, a head coach. Well, not all head coaches are, are not all coordinators make great head coaches. So now you've promoted this person to his level of incompetence, right? And a great head coach probably gets promoted to be an athletic athletic director, et cetera, et cetera. It's almost like if you have a great doctor, uh, he's great at what he does. He's a great surgeon. And then you promote him to run a hospital. Well, he, he doesn't know how to run a hospital. He doesn't know how to do the business side of it. He, It's not where he's great at. He was great as a surgeon. And it's possible Jim Leonard is great as a defensive coordinator. And we just don't know how he would be as a head coach. You know, we have to acknowledge the fact that it, he may not be able to own that moment. We have to acknowledge the fact that we don't know. Um, and that leads me into my next point of why not Jim Leonard. You have proven candidates out there that have proven it as head coaches right, who check a lot of the same boxes that Jim Leonard checks and, again, have proven it as head coaches. So you're talking about the Lance Leopold. We're going to do different shows on all these people. Uh, Lance Leopold, Dave Aranda, they, they've they proven it already at at higher levels. You know, they've proven it as the, the guy in the driver's seat. So you could easily make the argument of why go Jim Leonard when you could just go get a head coach that you already know is good as a head coach. You know, and and checks a lot of those same boxes from a recruiting, from a communication standpoint, from a from a relatable standpoint as a Jim Leonard. And it's a great question, right? It's a great question. So that would be my biggest reason why not Jim Leonard. And the answer to that is because you can go hire a head coach that's already proven he can be a head coach. Um, I hope you all enjoyed the show. Ton more content coming up. We got Northwestern game preview, um, more discussions on different coaching candidates, where we're going to go from here. Basketball talk coming up. This has been Locked On Badgers, your team every single day. Uh, if you enjoy the show, uh, please hit the subscribe button. It really does help. And then go check out Locked On Big Ten with your host, Nate Dickinson, to bring you all around the Big Ten Conference. With that, on Wisconsin, and we'll talk to you all tomorrow.